Hello there, I'm Tim and he's John and this is How to Murder Time, a podcast about games and things. Hello everybody. Watcher. It's another week. Should we talk about some games? What games have been played? Yeah, why yes. not? I'm going to kick straight off with Tabletop Simulator. What does this one do? This one simulates a tabletop. This is, I, don't, I, I came across this from uh, mentions in the old Steam group there, on Slack channel there. Um, I'd never heard of it before. It is basically uh, what it sounds like. It's a tabletop simulator. It simulates a table upon which you can put a board and some pieces and then play some board games. So uh, it comes with a whole load of stuff that lets you uh, get the basic gist of how it, do- how, how it all works and stuff. But essentially it's a kind of 3D virtual space in which there is a table and counters. And of course you can connect via Steam's matchmaking and stuff to other Steam friends and stuff. Presumably there's ways to connect directly. I haven't really looked into all the multiplayer gubbins of it all, but I think most people just use Steam because it's easy. Um and and that's all it does really there's, there's a lot of scripting stuff in there there's sort of resources you can upload and download and there's a massive workshop section in steam that goes with it all um i fired up a few to test it and have a go they, they've got a jigsaw mode on there wow yeah basically you upload you you, you it give truly it, is the future it's the future you give it a you give it an image a jpeg a ping whatever and it will cut it up into jigsaw pieces of the uh, number you require and then scatter them and then you have to put it all back together by picking up and physically moving the pieces you're you use the you use a mouse to do it mouse pointer turn his little hand you hover over a piece it highlights you left click up it pops and then you can move it around you can use the q and e keys to rotate the uh, the pieces or f to flip the piece over onto its other side it it's, does an amazing job of allowing a two-dimensional interaction with a three-dimensional space which is the big problem with all vr really isn't it and a lot of games in general is how do you how do you use a mouse to interact with a three-dimensional world? And yeah. the, the con- various control schemes have sort of come up over the years and been sort of adopted as the accepted way of going about this stuff. But nothing's really been there for what's essentially moving moving counters around on a table, on a board. Um, this does a really good job. It is surprisingly intuitive. There's a little tutorial there that takes you through the basics of how to move things around. Uh, and once you've got the hang of that, you're basically done. That's it. Beyond there, you, you're you're having to know the rules of a particular board game or whatever. I mean, it comes with all the usual drafts, chess, mar- um, um, solitaire, that kind of thing. A variety of different sorts of game there, backgammon. Um, it comes with various sets of pieces as well. There's some generic role-playing game pieces, uh, little figurines of dragons and, and monsters and heroes and stuff, and dungeon tile pieces. So you could quite easily use this system to run and host and play tabletop versions of pen and paper games. I mean, I sort of had a little brief look at some of the, the Pathfinder modules and, and things that people had put together in the workshop and had a quick look at some of those. And I'm, I'm wondering if the act of recreating a physical gaming space is particularly necessary in in the age where you've got stuff like Roll20.net, which is what we were using last time we were playing Pathfinder Online. Um, that's the Pathfinder Online, not Pathfinder Online. That's a different thing. Um so I'm wondering how useful actually having a literal sit down with pizza boxes around a table type simulator is compared to more dedicated collaborative whiteboard type tools that already exist. Roll Twenties one. I think Google Hangouts has a whole load of stuff as well. There's a whole load of sort of evolutions along the online role playing game sort of modes uh, that. I don't know, move, start to move away from the literal having a table and a, and a GM screen and a whole load of rule books and stuff. I mean, this is literally, this, 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 the, the tabletop simulator would literally allow you to have a GM screen and hidden hidden tables and stuff, but you'd have to upload it all as, as JPEGs, essentially, or you know, pings or whatever, so that they can then be shared as tabletop images on bits of cardboard or whatever. So it's an interesting idea, I think, I can't see it really being useful for that, though. I mean, just speaking as a GM, I think I'd find it a lot more hassle preparing an adventure for for play in Tabletop Simulator than setting up something like Roll20 or even just describing it in chat and uploading images in a Dropbox or something. But for board games, it's absolutely spot on. Yeah. We, we all um, we had a go on Friday on the Friday game group there. I think we've decided that, well, I, I've decided that perhaps I need a break from Planet Side 2 because the rage was taking over and it wasn't making me very pleasant for anyone else. It lasted one week. No, I, I, no, we were doing it for a couple of weeks, actually. But, um, but no, we've decided to, well, I don't know. <laughs> I've decided I'm not playing and, and everyone else decided to stop that at uh, that point as well. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure if then. Yeah, I think tabletop seemed like it was something that was suggested previously. You know, what are we going to play next? So we thought, all right, let's try that next. Uh, and so a couple of us got it. We went and had a rummage around on the Steam Workshop. Um, yes, there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff in there. Pretty much every board game I could think of, I found a, 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 a module on the Steam Workshop for it. In, I've played X-wing on, on it. Yeah, on on the tabletop simulator, which is great. Uh, yes, and, well, good and bad. I mean, I imagine very few of them are officially supported or endorsed by the Some people. Are, actually I believe make Malifaux the is, or the Vassal version of Malifaux, maybe one or the other. Yeah, I think there are the occasional game, physical game manufacturing company, you know, people who make the board games who are okay with with digital versions of it. But on the whole, I think most of this stuff is just uh, DCMA takedown copyright fodder that just hasn't come to anyone's attention yet. So I think uh, in terms of moral and... Are and, you saying that the version of 40k on there may not entirely <laughs> may be... May not. But, I'm surprised. Yeah, you have a look in the workshop there and there are entire Dark Eldar armies and entire Chaos Space Marine armies there that you just have as pieces and you can down, you know, upload to Tabletop Simulator and there are 40k game mats so presumably you can play 40k functionally on this thing uh, whether you should or not or whether the Games Workshop Black Helicopters will descend on your house kick in the door and flashbang and uh, take you down is another thing um, I suppose yeah moralistically speaking most of this stuff is, is piracy but if, I suppose if you own at least one of you playing owns a physical copy of that board game can it be said to be somewhat less of a grey just consider me having lent you my copy <laughs> oh, yeah I'm, I'm sort of using that as a get out of jail free card on the basis that I, I would have otherwise been playing with you and you've owned them all anyway but um, yeah so that, that kind of thing aside we decided to have a go at Lords of Waterdeep which I think we probably talked about in a board game a while ago on it's this been a show long a long time, time ago yeah. but the game itself so not but really... this is a, a good way I think of talking mm. about Lords of Waterdeep again well, yeah. I mean, Lords of Wars Deep is a, is a is a fine game, very very well put together. Very little in the way of random chance yeah. there. It's more about do not be resource put off management. by the fact that it's a D and D game. It yes. so is not. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's so if if it had all been if it had been set in the modern day and it was about factories and spending resources to acquire mergers and acquisitions, it would function identically. The basic gameplay is essentially resource management. You spend your turns taking turns to accumulate and then spend various coloured cubes, uh, which will get you victory points. The fact that these cubes are meant to represent a fighters, warriors, clerics and rogues is, is almost neither here nor there. You, so yeah, you, you you take turns placing your little your little meeples, your agents, you have a limited number of these, two, two to begin with, and that goes up halfway through the game. You place them in the spaces on the board, uh, and each, each different space gives you different things. Sometimes they'll give you a cube, sometimes they'll give you new quests or entry cards which you can play to change things. Uh, you accumulate cubes and then you spend the cubes and money to complete quests and quests typically give you victory points and at the end of the game you, the person with the most victory points wins there's an extra a hidden element in the at the start of the game you get dealt a face down Lord of Waterdeep which is who you are for that game and that Lord of Waterdeep will have a at the end of the game do these count up all this stuff type conditions and those don't get revealed to the very end of the game so you might look like you're winning uh, but at the very end when the, the lord cards are revealed and the extra points generated from their particular conditions for example the one i had was at the end of the game gain four victory points for every building you have constructed i think it's four or six something like that so naturally that leads you to a particular style of play another person might have to try and complete as many skullduggery and commerce quests each of the quests has a different suit as it were and you sort of work your way through doing that and it's clever in the you go to when you put your little person on the board they they do an action for, for going to that place in water deep there so you go to the the plinth it's called you go there and you get one white cube and as simple as that you get a cleric so from the rest of that round the the no one else can put a person on that place so it becomes about blocking your opponent there's only one square on the board that lets you build buildings which means yeah. i had to try and get in there quite early yeah it's very easy to tell when you think somebody's on if they're a always going strategy. for that yeah so you have to play cleverly yeah but then there is another there's another space you can go which reese gives you the first player token if you go there which means the next round you'll be at the start which means that you can jump ahead of everyone else so there's there's a lot of strategy to it it's colorful the, the bits are interesting it's it's it's, it's relatively straight to pick up up. there's no sort of ages of looking stuff up in tables or anything like that it's a very well thought out and well constructed game and as you say it's a, a huge surprise that it seems to have a tap in, been attached to some some awful mawkish uh, D and d type ip it really doesn't really doesn't gain anything from it or, or need it it's such a solid well thought out mechanical game in its own right you could put any ip on it and it'd still be great so yeah 
So we're playing that, and and but the added addition, of course, with this tabletop simulator, which let you know pe- friends of mine who live all around the country uh, have a board game night together on on a Friday, which is is great. I mean, I do do actual face to face board game nights sometimes as well, but they're not always easy to to get to and to arrange. And it's nice to be able to play board games with other people, your friends who are you know far away. And this system is really good for that. Yeah, with everyone scattered to the four winds, mm. it really does make it easy to play stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I can't endorse it hardly enough. I mean, the the pieces they have the right noise and stuff like the little coin tokens the little square ones with the holes in and the moons with the holes in for lords of water deep they they say they have this metallic clink noise when they drop on top of other because yeah, that's my big thing they look like the rubbish coins that you get with it but i got this kickstarter set of real coins which yeah, really are yeah. metal which means i have the best copy of the set ever yeah and uh yeah so these sound like metal ones yeah and the, the cards have a sort of papery card sound to it. It, it it's odd in how visceral how actual you know tactile it all feels when obviously it's nothing of the sort it is entirely a virtual experience conducted through your computer but it you know the the, the cards make a riffle noise when you shuffle them you know they make a noise when you draw one it's they've, they've gone the extra mile doing getting the uh, the extra bits and pieces to the physicality of it's interesting as well there's a really f- solid fully powered physics engine going on in there as well to the point where i think it would probably be quite easy to actually play something like marbles or, or darts or or hungry hippos or something you know some sort of the the, the, the physics engine is definitely up to proper physical collisions between objects so games i don't know like um dice game what's your dice game where you flick the dice cube quest, cube quest. that would probably work in here yeah because the physics does seem up to it you i don't know if you can flick you can certainly flick pieces i hadn't i didn't have a go i mean lords of water deep is not really a physical game you don't you, you don't play it by actually flicking stuff or trying to bash stuff off other stuff but something like crossbows and catapults might work here you know the the physics of the pieces is is really significant i mean that's not something that's going to necessarily be that appealing or useful to most board game players because most board games are abstract games rather than games of dexterity they're games of strategy and cunning but i think this probably could do it you probably could roll a marble across a table and hit other marbles and have them go out of a circle that kind of thing you know it's very very interesting what they've done it supports up to 10 players very few games support 10 players but you you can have loads of people come in and spectate and watch as well they get to see everything that's going on it's that's good you can appoint one person a sort of game master who gets to see everything whereas any ordinary spectators and indeed players can't see everyone else's cards so you you can you can't have sort of spoilering that way i mean the sort of traditional casino games probably work here i think it comes with a roulette thing i think um it comes with a whole load of unlock pay for dlc which i a, a whole load of games that i zombie nev- sides in there i see. i'd never heard of any of them but then that doesn't say a lot yeah zombie <laughs> sides in there which is a real game i which... think it's one or two particular game companies have got on board with the people who make tabletop simulator and offered their games in a properly licensed form that you can buy as extra dlc for this system but i really haven't looked into the 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 sort of editing and scripting and building side of it but obviously all the stuff in the workshop is essentially mods is essentially stuff pe- you know just players have made made yeah so presumably there is mechanisms to upload your own 3d models into it presumably there's mechanisms to you know add your own scripting to some degree oh you can do anything you it's, want it's, it really. seems very powerful from the sort of builder from the editor sort of side which explains why i had real trouble finding any board game i'd ever heard of that didn't have a, a version of it available in the well, steam Workshop. just looking mm. uh katan's, katan's on there, there of course. Uh, cards against humanity unfortunately armada's on there yeah yeah all your x-wing miniatures games the, the various scalar ones i think that revolution things in there Star Wars Revolution that's there Uh, I saw Eclipse and Twilight Imperium which is you know pretty impressive considering how difficult they are to find in real life Uh, I don't think I've ever finished or even started a game of Twilight Imperium but Eclipse is quite good that might be interesting Galactica's there with all the various expansions as well I might suggest that next time it's my turn my turn to pick one for this night Dominion yeah that's your card game there I mean yeah it works well enough for cards all the the, the, you, you have a sort of area in front of yourself which is has a highlight around it and any card you place in there cannot actually be seen by your opponents so you essentially that works as your hand and you can flip the cards face up in the hand area and they'll only be visible to you everyone else will just see the card backs which is nice you know they thought of the basic mechanics that that underpin pretty much every board game and built them in in, in quite a 
elegant fashion. I, I'm really impressed with it. Really, really impressed. It is a platform. Yeah, you get quite a few games with it, but it's a way to facilitate existing games that you already play or are familiar with or have wanted yeah. to try and, and play against and with friends who are otherwise not able to come around your house every Thursday. You know? Yeah, it really is not That's going to replace thing. um no, your not, usual not game night, but no. it is a nice thing to have when you don't have As a, as a side thing, yeah, absolutely. It is really good. So we've only really seriously played Lords of Waterdeep in anger yet, but I think what we'll probably do on the Fridays for a while, uh, everyone else uh, agreeing, of course, is uh, stick with this for a while and just try lots of different board games for a bit until the basic the basic idea of just playing board games at all gets a bit boring and then we'll probably be off to some other MMO hellhole or something but I'm really enjoying it and sort of quite looking forward to the Fridays now with the various games I've told everyone to go away and have a rummage through the workshop and um, come up with some games that they want to try and we'll all take it in turns to have a go at this stuff it's all very impressive can't can't recommend it highly enough because just just from the sheer potential of what it rec- represents as a single, single player solo experience i don't think there's much there for you if you're not intending to play it with friends across you know across voice chat and you know of a, of a, of a gaming night no it, it still it, is a board game it's, for board it, gaming people yeah i mean it, it's got jigsaw puzzles it's got you know solitaire with the marbles jumping over each other but that's tech demo essentially more than anything else there's not really a lot there in terms of narrative 40 hour single player campaign it's really not that kind of thing at all but um yeah if you've got a little gang of you want to want to try some contemporary board games and online this is the way it really does seem to offer everything you need very impressed it's very good. And it's got a VR mode as well. Yes. It's a, is it all VR? Vive only, I think. But, yeah, yeah, I think Steam tend to focus on the, the Vive stuff. But it'll probably else. start working with Oculus when it gets uh, the Now, I'm controls. wondering about the VR aspects of it. I think this is one of those situations where VR doesn't help. Because yeah, well, because if, <clears throat> a realistic experience of a board game night is you sat in one particular point around the table. Yes, you can stand up and lean over to look at things, but generally you're sat in one fixed viewpoint looking around the table. There'll be stuff on the far side of a board you can't read properly that you need to get friends to read out for you, that kind of thing. So you can either do that with your Vive, in which case you're <laughs> sat at a table simulator, or you're just floating around using the Omni viewpoint that you get with the, the mouse and keyboard No Vive version, which, which is essentially use floating around the table with the camera to wherever you need to be zooming to whatever you need to be and that's just going to be really disorienting as a vr experience surely because that's not really anything like life at all um i don't know i don't know if vr would help i suppose if you've got vr anyway this is probably worth a try Mm. but uh, i wouldn't wouldn't rush out and buy that just for this and that's basically the statement on vr for everything (laughs) well yeah so yeah over to you i'm going to talk about pokemon go pokemon go yes Mm. yes the pokemon go is a game which Remember Ingress? Yes. Does everyone remember my, my underground sword fight car park experience with Ingress? That it's was... like that, but less Highlander, a lot more ugly. <laughs> yeah, okay. It was a sort of, sort of kid-friendly, brightly coloured yeah. version of going out into the wild and, and accosting strangers. Yeah, this is the mobile phone app where you wander around and you'll be walking along and your phone will buzz and say there's a Pokemon nearby. Oh. And then use an AR uh, thing where you have to find the Pokemon, throw a Pokeball at it, and capture it. Are you suddenly interested in going out and walking again? Yeah, yeah you know damn well. This happens about once every three years. Some some ARG <laughs> turns up, and odd that, oddly there was a Pokemon game a couple of years ago which had a pedometer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, suddenly you were uh, all about walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, then there are gyms which you go along and you have fights at, and you're basically gyms are your nodes. Is this the year Pokey stops? Is it? Now, your poker stops are uh, places like the local village hall. I'm galloping you... along bes- behind popular opinion and Twitter and trying to, work, trying, to, trying to bluff my way onto the stagecoach and work those out what's going on. Those are things you go along to. You yeah. bring them up and it's a landmark. Yeah. And then you tw- uh, flick the screen and the screen flips round yeah. and then you get a bunch of resources. Like so they're like, they're like your portals and... in yeah. Ingress, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And mm. then you've got the gyms, which are the things you're actually fighting over control for. Okay. And you fight by control. Whoever owns that gym puts their uh, a Pokemon in charge of that gym. That is definitely a portal from Ingress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you know, other, and other people can reinforce it. And yes, help that, it. Yeah. And yeah. other people can try and take it down. Oh wow! No, wow! This is only like an actual straight rip of Ingress, rather than no, no. It's not a straight rip. No, same company. Oh my god. <laughs> Wow. So Ingress turned out to be really boring after a while yeah. and everyone stopped playing it. How can we revitalise this? Let's just reskin it all with Pokemons. Let's have it so there's the you've got to catch them all aspect. Oh my god. Wow. 
That's it. Is, it, is it literally oh, the same? Same. Well, it'll be the same landmarks and same nodes, I suppose. But sort depending of. which client you're looking at it in, can either yeah. be an ingress portal or well, a pokey. It may gym. well be <laughs> that you did me a massive favour when you tried to get the pub turned into an, an ingress thing, because I, maybe. the pub is a. Uh, <laughs> A, a node and the pub over the road I, from the pub is a uh, I did that thing. entirely out of self interest I didn't realise that like five years later I'd be helping you if I knew if I'd have known that gosh right add that so, to the list of time machine when we go do. there we've got to check and see if it's the photo you took okay because you had to take a photo and upload it didn't you? I think so yeah, yeah. You, so you, see if it's you, your you photo. nominate it as a thing and I think I don't know if that's some arcane process happens and a couple of months later it might turn up yeah. there are some problems with this game yeah, I were, will say that out the back there were problems with ingress too one th- 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 there's no game Yes, that was the well, that was the key key problem that I had with Ingress is that actually this is just a walking simulator, isn't it? I could just go around. I could just actually. I think shortly after getting bored of Ingress, I decided on a plan of actual exercise instead. So uh, there you go. I did actually learn also that there's absolutely no security. I wasn't on Ingress. You didn't need to leave the house. It was, it's all just HTTP messages. Oh what? So you could just send false HTTP to the server and it will think you're out yeah, in Cumbria yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, when you capture, you find a Pokemon in the wild. Yes. Um, and to capture it, you just have to throw a Pokeball into a ring. Okay. Which with we'll you not, so far? We just. I never understood screen, Pokemon. And and there's not there's no battle. There needs to be a battle to get in a Pokemon game. Yeah. You see, usually I see, get... in, in Ingress, you have to go out late at night to a pub car park and beat some stranger to death. To, usually, to, at to this get anything... point in the show, I'm looking at you, thinking <laughs> you're about you're trying to explain something that everyone knows about, but I'm about to explain something <laughs> that everyone knows about to the one man on the planet who doesn't. So, in Pokemon, Hello. when you're to capture yes. a Pokemon, you have yes. a battle against it, and you've got your different types. Why? That, that's not that's no way to start a, a meaningful relationship with a trusted ally and companion. They like it, <laughs> uh, and you've got different classes of Do Pokemon. Do they just respect strength? Then is that it? Yeah. It's very clean. On thing, yeah. Uh, some you got water Pokemon, you got uh, uh, earth Pokemon, whatever, and some are more stronger. Right, Sodium Pokemon, yeah. Magnesium mm. Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Did you see that magnesium, magnesium fire? But yeah, yes, that was yeah. amazing. Brilliant. Anyway. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so you got to put another link in the show notes now. Uh, I, I will <laughs> forget. No, um, I just put a white screen. Stay on focus. Yes, and so you Pokemon in, in normal <laughs> in, in normal Pokemon games. Yes, you have to. Um, uh, uh, do a battle with the Pokemon to get it. In this case, just for a thing to get uh, capture it. And uh, in this, the battles are only happens at the gym, but the gym battles are really, really simplistic and nothing like the ba- uh, Pokemon battles in the real game of Pokemon. Mm. And so, so it if- wasn't any real in this sense. It wasn't any particular battles in Ingress. You just used a used a thing. Uh, uh, you pushed a use thing thing, and eventually, if you did it enough times, you, the the place would flip. There was no sort of active defense element apart from some really quite terrifyingly on the ball people who just turn up out of nowhere in cars and start doing their thing but you were screeching tires and yes stuff. yeah that, that, i don't think that was typical to be honest now now i come to explain to other people i think that might have been a bit unusual still anyway pokemons yeah uh, and so the game is just a little bit weak and a mm, little bit mm. lacking um, but as an excuse to get you out of the house and walking about a bit uh, which ter- I think is what Ingress might have been trying to do. It's a terrible excuse to do that <laughs> because it drains your battery so fast. Oh yeah, that it's almost unplayable. That was a problem with Ingress as well. Actually, I had to run, I had to drive around with a charging cable in my car just to keep the phone going, so I could, so I could actually play. I wasn't actually using the car to swipe up Ingress points, but it, it does have a fantastic. By the time you'd walked around the block and done the Ingressing, you'd, you'd need to charge. It's the phone got a fantastic about uh, low, um, battery saving mode where if you tilt the phone down, yeah. it turns everything off. Hmm. So the screen, the backlight turns off and everything. Mm, okay. Which is quite handy. But mm. sometimes when you bring it up again, it then no longer takes mm. any uh, 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 touch input, <laughs> which is less than optimal. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. So, yeah, mm. so yeah, I, I went out and um, uh, did a bunch of it on Saturday. Went for a long walk in somewhere I never usually go walking, yeah. which was a bizarre experience yeah. because I um, ran into you. Yeah, I was there. Well, you don't live anywhere near there. Yeah, I, well, I stalk you all the time, but you surprised me by going by suddenly turning around and I wasn't, I wasn't in the way. No, I happened to be out and about um, with, my, with my family, um, relations and things, on a kayaking trip. Dunking small children yes. into a Yes, canal. I accidentally dropped my niece in a canal, um, which my sister learned a valuable lesson from. I think everyone learned a valuable lesson there that day, really, um, which was mostly that I am really not a, a sufficiently grown-up grade parental responsibility I, type I, adult. I saw the photo of you in a kayak. You did not look that happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
yeah so, so uh, anyway the um, uh, Pokemon game is quite good for what it is it has the potential of being outstanding if and only if they turn it into a Pokemon game mm. well it's the, it's the ingress problem again it's, it's like we've got this cool way to hook these particular different systems together of GPS of, of landmarks of you know the, of the server side collection and, and hunting for stuff aspect but can we build a compelling game out of it and I, I think you can I don't think ingress was but no but I think the Pokemon one you can because you've got the combat if you just put the combat from all of the Pokemon bits into yeah. the Pokemon then I think you'd actually have a compelling game so do your your little pokey friends decay over time do you have to keep going out and getting new ones or do you have to level them up by is there an active I have to keep playing this over and over element or or do you get to a point where you think I've got all all of my pokey fr- friends I need now Not, I'm well, done you're leveling up your pokey friends as well mm, yeah and that uh, requires more going out and finding special energy yeah you, or, you, yeah, you need yeah. to find little candies and things so at some point you're going to get a bit bored of just having to go out and wandering down canal towpaths but, but you can also the level them up by taking them to a gym and having them fighting and okay so, yeah. and where's your gym have you got gym. a gym nearby that you go pub. to yeah uh, okay <laughs> the pub <laughs> Oh, this, is, yeah, this, is, this has all the elements of a let's just wait in the Winchester till it all blows over. Apparently, yeah. as as we were driving past and the girlfriend uh, declared that uh, <laughs> there was one at the pub, I got rather excited. <laughs> so this combines your twin elements of, of, of Pokemon and sitting in a pub. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a game made for you, really. It really it? is. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, because it's, it's got pub and a resource thing there. I have there. to say, I don't think I'd ever seen you shown any interest in Pokemons whatsoever I prior know. to this thing came out. No, I like Pokemon. Okay. I've played. A it's couple. just a side of yourself you've wisely chosen to hide couple, from me. No, it, it's because I don't. For talk, fear of scorn. I don't usually talk about Nintendo products on this uh, podcast <laughs> because of their attitude to video monetization. Well, there's that too, yes. And of course, the big problem is how do I capture footage from this game before this? I know. Do I have to follow you around with a camcorder as you wander around the canal tape? That's one of the options. The other option is a laptop. That's not going to be great. I, I do have a video recorder stuff for the. Oh iPhone. well, there we go. We need a special one-off episode where you go live, hunt down a Pokemon like sort of Steve Irwin style. Yeah. And I'll, I, I can be the camera. I'm going to need a laptop. I'm going to need, need the, the hat. Uh, need the, the hardware hat as video well. capture. The, sh- the khaki the shorts. Going to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's an excellent project. Do comment and tell us if you want us to do that, because he doesn't want to do it. I'll be quite bored of Pokemon by the next episode, I can guarantee you. <laughs> we can do a half-hour episode from the pub as you, you watch your Pokemon training out. Yeah. Mm. yeah, You wait till we get to the pub later. Oh, God. Po- Pokey pub. Do you want to talk about another thing? Um, I'm going to talk about System Shock, which I've discovered is fantastic gem. I think lots of people had already discovered it. By we was did a late, whole show on System Shock. Late to the parties ever. Well, of course, this Looking Glass Studios System Shock 1990 something or other. A fantastic cyberpunk uh, first person adventure f- shooter type thing with a large psychological horror survival elements to it uh, that spawned, of course, Shodan, the, uh, the, the, the one of the most memorable computer game villains in any poll or survey. Uh, well, I've, yeah, I came across this Kickstarter-y thing. They've got, they got demos on GOG and on Steam. There's a company who I don't even know what are called, and my, my co-host is frantically Googling for it as we speak. There's, there's a company who have basically got the rights to remaster System Shock. They are b- rebuilding the original System Shock game using modern technology, modern engines. Night Dive Studios! Night Dive Studios, there we go. And let's have a look at the uh, the Kickstarter page there. Yeah, yeah. there it, we go. Yeah, 18 so, days to go at time of recording. 18 days to go, and they have met their goal of $900,000. That seems very low. It seems modest. Most people trying a project like this ask for a billion, billion dollars. You can't see this, but I'm doing the Dr. Evil little finger. Um, now, I would mock them for this being this quite low for what it actually no, is. No, but... Yeah? The demo. So, yeah, so I played the demo. You can see some footage of it going on behind my talkage. Um, and also you can find and have a go yourself quite quite comfortably. It's on Steam, it's on GOG, it's free. Literally, yeah, free, free. There's nothing, no, you know, no free to play or any nonsense like that. It is very short, uh, and probably I don't know how someone who's never played System Shock's going to find it, but it is really, really astonishingly good. It's it's such a high high fidelity, high concept reimagining with completely modern texturing, modern detail, modern sounds, and everything. Runs runs nicely on a on a modern PC and just looks the business. The lighting, the shading, because you got to remember coming at this from System Shock One, I. I hope the co-host's going to remember to stick some System Shock 1 footage on this talkage bit, just for some comparison. But it was really very rudimentary. It was like uh, 15 years ago, getting on for that. 
it was 97 was it 97 i don't know I, yeah but that kind of age so the original game and it still holds up i played through it not so long ago very good very interesting a lot of fun but obviously very very low low res graphics all the all the monsters are two-dimensional sprites you know there's the textures are like 64 pixels maybe i don't know there was an enhanced edition of system shock which had uh, slightly higher 94 it came out 94 wow that's that's a long long time ago so that's all the years that's all the years yeah i don't think we had computers back then it was all done with clockwork so uh, who wants to play system shock but modern that's a fantastic thing uh, a lot of the looking glass studios folks are actually working on this as well so that's that's fantastic yeah um it's just a really i mean like i say i, I get very uh, tired and, and disappointed with the the modern the modern disease of rebooting and reimagining you know the way that we every you know every five years you can expect a new spider-man origin story you know and you just think ah, oh, god mate, let's make new things but I, i'm forced to definitely backtrack on this particular one i just love waking up in that medical bay but just seeing it with the lighting with instead of flat plain textures that are all super detailed with indents and backlights and shelves that actually are shelves instead of sort of pers- flat plane perspective art of shelves you know the the, ga- the gadgets the gizmos the little spark pistol you find that in the demo and you're firing that away and changing the different settings on it and stuff really good i mean i yeah i can't see this being a vast huge success i can't see this storming the you know, the charts and knocking various modern first person shooters survival horror first person shooters off the chart but i think it's going to get a very warm reception from from a from a uh, from gamers of a certain age a certain following uh, of which i'm definitely one i'm really really impressed with it so i'm looking forward to it i don't normally look forward to kickstarty stuff i don't normally it's it's all like you know I, I have this sort of basic uh assumption that if the idea were any good you wouldn't need to go crowdfunding for it somebody somebody who knows a bit about it with some money would give you the money to get it done but i suppose this isn't a vastly profitable commercial enterprise this is very much a labor of love which i suppose is kickstarter done right isn't yeah. it yeah and having looked i didn't even know it was a kickstarter i thought at this stage with a demo that you know an alpha demo that's that good i'd have thought wow well, it must be practically finished by now you know this must be part of the pre-launch ramp up but no this is the here's what we've done so far can we have some money to make the whole thing and oh my god you've done that much so far without any money that's astonishing it really is i mean normally these kickstarter ideas that turn up at this phase in the kickstart tend to be a couple of concept arts and some just really overblown ideas from some some sort of semi-charismatic game and, producer and out of comments work type. like we're not planning on actually making any money from this we don't see why disney wouldn't give us a star trek license yeah. a star wars license well, that kind of thing which well, we have seen before. it's all pipe dreams usually um but this this I mean, just seeing what they've got already it gives me an enormous confidence that they can do it and it will be done and it probably will be done when they say for the money they say and they've just uh yeah looking at kickstart now when i when i recorded the video i went to their website and had a look on the kickstart and it, they were just under basically when you finish the uh demo it takes you to the kickstarter page <laughs> <laughs> which is fair enough uh, and it hadn't quite made it um, on saturday but by the time yeah a couple of days later there it is they got the money they need they'll probably get a bit more there's probably stretch goals um i don't even know what the stretch goals are hopefully uh, there's not this, 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 that worries me a little bit i mean i was talking to somland about this and he, he was he was saying that he's seen that there was a stretch goal in there to add rpg elements and i just yeah. thought, whoa hello no back, the 1.7 million dollar goal enemy yeah. limb dismemberment more puzzles <laughs> uh-huh. ammo types weapon settings mm. vending machines yeah. basic components research rpg progression mm. weapon upgrading hardcore mode no responding See, all of those... iron mad mode only one save game if you die, See, it's deleted. The, all of those features are essentially features from system shock 2 yeah so, see, this is the thing. I'm System Shock. If you're you're going to recreate System Shock and a very known and set series of parameters, I mean, here is the game. I, you know, I mean, looking at the demo, the little briefcase and the box are in the first cupboard, exactly where you expect them. They've got the things in them that you expect. I'm not expecting innovation and novelty and surprises from this, and I really would probably be quite offended if they decided to completely redesign it and add four more levels to the station. And you know, it turns out that actually Showdown is not 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 Showdown after all. That would be quite annoying if someone sort of remakes if you're going to remake things remake them faithfully and accurately from a from a sort of position of of being you know of appreciation don't don't take just strip out the ip rip out the guts and build your own you know generic corridor shooter 
you know, wrapped up in the gubbins of the the old thing we liked. And the the bits I've seen in the demo are pretty much spot on. They're really true to true to form. It's and it's not a difficult thing to work through. You have got a copy of System Shock. You make notes. You play through it, and then you, you rebuild it. What I really wouldn't want to see is them going mad with stretch goals. It all looked like people gave us loads more money. Now we feel compelled to add loads of stuff. No, no, no. See, I I want to see stretch goals disappear. Stretch goals to me in Kickstarter are, are a bit of a poison. They they very much are sort of getting in the philosophy of we don't want to leave money on the table. Yeah, you know, oh God, we've only asked for a million and we could have got two million. We could have got five million. Let's let's uh, give them some reason to keep giving us money. No, no, you've asked for what you've got. There it is. Take it and go and get on with it. Yeah, and I think stretch goals and and second goes and re, re, reopening for more money should should be illegal. Um, There's two examples actually of yeah. games with stretch goals. Well, things with stretch goals. For Recently, the work that, which I think have been done badly. One was the Dark Souls board game, which I got, <laughs> Dark Souls board I got game. so pissed wow. off with the stretch goals on it, I yeah. cancelled my backing of it. Yeah, because it just got went from this nice little contained game to this massive mess. It's when somebody, somebody with a bit of marketing now, decides, oh crap, we've massively underestimated the popularity of what we're trying to do here, and we've asked for not enough money. No, no, you should ask for the money you need to do the job. That's that's when Kickstarter works well. You have a modest, you know, you lay it all out. You have some sort of plan. You, you even publish that plan so that people can have a look, have a poke over it. Because that's what you'd have to do if you were going to approach a venture capitalist. And they certainly aren't going to give you an extra couple of million because they like the cut of your jib. No. They'll give you exactly what you need because you've presented them with a business plan. That's why they're venture capitalists and earn money for a living. Um, but uh, it, there's a temptation just to keep uh, keep adding more and more because people still want to throw money at us. Don't forget, these people still need to go and buy the game at some point. You know, Wrap up all your extra goals into a next project and do it as DLC. And then we'll see, you know, start on a fresh sheet with that. That's the way to do that, I think. And that's typically how these extra features work in the real world. Anyway, ranting. But yeah, System Shock, re- a reimagined, well, not even reimagined, just <laughs> remastered is what they're, they're calling it. And I think that's probably the most accurate for, term, yeah. If you like it, go along to Kickstarter, search for System Shock. No, actually don't. Oh, no, don't. Yes, no. Stop. This Nobody is, back this is it. the point. It's at the right level. It Do has the money it. it needs now. Nobody else needs to give them any money. Because if you do, you're just going to drive them off mission, lose their focus, and make them go all crazy with concept art and you know, metal boxes and all sorts of nonsense like that. It, they're, they're, this is a closed job now. We can just sit back and wait, and, and in due course, we'll be able to buy it from Steam or GOG for a, a reasonable amount of money like a normal computer game. And I'm looking forward to that. But yes, please don't give them any more money. They've got what they needed, and now they need to just get on with it. That's good. Yeah, yeah, can't really argue with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. Stretch goals. Got your stretch goal right here. Anyway, you need to talk about a thing. I'm going to talk about Lego Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Okay, this is yet another Lego minifig that, adventure. I, that is the problem. The yeah. Yet another Lego minifig adventure. I, I know exactly what this guy. I, I haven't even seen it, and I can see it in my mind. I mean, I haven't even seen the film. I haven't seen the source material. And I can still see this how this thing how plays in my still mind. Not seen. The I don't film. know. It's become a. It's become a, a sort of mark of personal pride now that I've managed to somehow avoid it. So I think I might just run with that now. Never see it ever. You're have, gonna have to ambush me and do the you know clockwork orange eye hook things. Otherwise, I'm just okay. not going to see it. Fair enough. Yeah. Challenge, Challenge accepted. accepted. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, th- yes. This is very much more of the same. And here in lies mm. the rub because the reviewers all say, "Oh, look, it's more of the same. We're bored of this now." Mm. But coming at this from having skipped the last couple of Lego games, oh, well, there you go. I was. <laughs> <laughs> well in the mood for a nice new Lego game. Yeah, you sort of know what you're getting really with this, don't you? Yeah. A series of platformy puzzles and lightsaber swinging, collecting the little bouncing Lego studs and, and presumably lots of puzzles you can't solve until you've unlocked later characters to come back it's to. It's not too bad, actually. Hub-based replay for levels yeah, there's, there's, that, that well, broadly follows the plot of the film but with no actual spoken dialogue. I know, you have spoken dialogue. Now. Really? Yes, uh, oh, for the last couple of these dear. games they've taken dialogue out of the films. Oh no, no. Yeah, that, was one, that was one of the things I loved about the original Lego things, the, the Star Wars and all the other IPs they do, is that they managed to convey the fil- the, you know, a sense of warmth and humour and indeed the main bare bones of the plot that, that they're aping with a bunch of Lego heads that don't really emote or express. Yeah, they, they, the little facial expressions change, but there's, there's never any talking. I don't think they even use simish, do they? They don't make grunts or anything. Well, I think they used to. I don't know, but, but yeah, that, no. that's part of the charm. You, Lego people don't talk. Oh, but at this point, you've got um, a humour in bits that aren't actually in the film, so something will happen, and it does background crazy. It does all that. Then it's like uh, 
It starts off where you're doing the Battle of Endor because it starts off right back. Mm. And there's uh, interesting, there's whole jokes involved in that, like taking off um, Vader's helmet and stuff like that. Um, Which, you know, aren't in the film, that joke, (laughs) funnily enough. But uh, (laughs) they they do that to uh, make that kind of thing work there. And that works really well. And I'm actually really enjoying the game. It is really good. I've been playing it co-op with my girlfriend. I mean, yeah, you say there is just one game with many, many IPs attached to it. But that is the game itself is polished. Yeah, it is fun. And it is funny. It's a good game. It is a humorous game, and it, it manages to. You know, Star Wars is ripe for making jokes about it, mm. and so it does. Depends on the sort of person. I mean, if you're expecting something different and interesting with each new instalment of this Lego whatever, then you're not going to get it. But if you like, if you just love the basics of the Lego game, then it almost doesn't really matter what IP gets attached to it this time, I suppose. Yeah, mm. yeah. I do wonder if this is the last of the standalone Lego games. Because well, dimensions. dimensions. It's still there, and why it's is, doing really well. Why does this Star Wars thing exist on its own then? Disney. What, why is it? Oh, Disney Infinity. Oh, right. Because Disney owns Star Wars, so we're never going to see Star Wars in ah, dimensions. But yeah. Disney just canned Infinity, so all the oh. Marvel stuff and all the Star Wars stuff, we'll start and with... all the princessy stuff, and all of the uh, um, Pixar stuff. So that could possibly go to Lego now. Yeah, it might be. If they if they're not going to maintain their own competitor, then there'd be money. They could make money just selling the rights onto. Yeah, and it would make perfect sense. They have the relationship with Lego already. Yeah, because there is definitely Lego Disney stuff. Yeah. In terms of model physical models, you know, actual. The current range of Lego uh, collectible minifigs is all a range of Disney characters. So it's just the link with dimensions that's missing. uh, Disney princesses is um, very very. uh, Disney. Mm. Um, um, Star Wars is quite Disney. <laughs> uh, the, the Marvel superhero stuff is quite Disney. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, so it, the relationship's there. I mean, they, they said that they were going to continue uh, concentrate on um, licensing out the IPs to people who can do a better job. Mm. And yeah, I reckon Lego is so we'll definitely going to... probably see Dimensions with Star Wars stuff yeah. sooner I, or later. I, I, I will, not this year, year after. Mm. So I reckon with episode... Six, eight, eight's the next one, isn't it? Episode eight. Um, Would you need a whole new Dimensions base game to incorporate it all? Cause... No, that's what they've said. They've said that for the first three years at least, the Dimensions base mm. and base game is all you need. Because that already has all the content in it. All you're buying in your little base plates is unlocks, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you just download it as DLC. They'll just oh, okay. Stuff. Oh, it has the capacity to be upgraded. Yeah, the year two okay, stuff yeah. for um, um, Dimensions is coming out soon. Mm. Which um, the the big story thing is the Ghostbusters two set. Yes. Which you you know how um, in Disney and uh, there's uh, sorry Lego Dimensions there's the you have the little base thing, and then you build up this little portal on it. Yeah. Well, this one has the large story bit of DLC and a, a new replacement build up on the base thing. Yeah. So you've got the uh, a new Ghostbusters base, which you just build onto your existing um, base. Okay. So th- they've thought of these Reuse things. is good, yeah. Because... Because that's what will kill it, I think, is, is exasperated parents just not wanting to fork out another hundred quid or whatever. Well, I say all it, the time, you know, it, every it, other, yeah. every six months, it, it, to keep paying what through the really nose. Really, has not helped Skylanders. Mm. The fact that you've had to just buy a new thing every time. Why can't you play with the old one, Junior? You know, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, Disney never did that; they used the same one all the way through, mm. but they never really made the game any good. Well, yeah. But, There's yeah. a lot of things that need to come together to make it work, and I suppose. But yeah, and also, also work. the Lego one's so much better because it has the um, a much better interaction of actually using the toys for gameplay. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah but, you've got to make the toys relevant, otherwise you might as well just be selling RFID yeah. chips. Which is where um, uh, the latest Skylanders falls down, I reckon. Yeah, and um, they've announced that it, you, you start off by making your own Skylander in game. Okay, it ain't gonna match your toy. No, well, it sounds like they've basically given up on the toy at that point. Well, no, they're still selling the toys. There's two teams in Skylanders. Uh, one team does the, the good games, one team does the <laughs> bad games, and the, the bad games always have the bad hardware. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, get, getting back to this Star Wars game. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic, Hugh Morris. The big innovation is you know, when you find a pile of bouncing bricks and you have to build it? Uh, yeah. Now you can point it in one of several locations and build a different thing. So, you might have to build something here, do part of the puzzle, demolish it, build it there, okay. do the next part of the puzzle. Sounds a bit more elaborate, yeah. Yeah, it's slowly getting more complicated. Hmm. Um, the uh, vehicle levels are still fun. Um, there, there's a lot of flying around shooting stuff. Uh, it's still slightly buggy, but then again, it isn't it always. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's a really, really good game. and I really do recommend it if you haven't played one for a while or you just really like Star Wars. 
Cool. Yeah. Excellent. That, yeah, very good. I like it. And I have no other games to talk about. Okay. Uh, I talk about Couch to 5K still. I'm still doing oh, it. Oh, God. Yes. I ran 20 minutes today. I'm, 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 I, I, I have to tell someone, Did you get so off I'm going to tell everyone. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, no, five-minute warm-up walk, 20 minutes continuous running. No walking, no slacking, no stopping. Distance? Uh, I don't know. I don't do it in distance. It's all time-based, all this Couch to 5K stuff. You basically Because you're listening to a, essentially a you know, running podcast that tells you when to start and when to stop and plays music in between and stuff. So it's all done by time. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter specifically the speed you're doing. And indeed, you're encouraged to slow your pace rather than stop and walk. The, point, the important thing is to continually be jogging rather than actually, you know, walking or giving up or stopping or going down the pub or whatever. But yeah, so I'm, yeah, week five was, I've just finished week five. This was the third one. Week five has three different runs in. And I, I, I was reading ahead and I wish I hadn't because it was terrifying. I, I started, I think, week, so the first the um the first run on the week five was run five minutes walk three run five walk three and then it was run run eight minutes and walk five run eight minutes and then it was walk then it was run 20 minutes so really ramping up and all the way through there laura the coach there is saying that basically you can physically do all of it now that now from this point on it's about mentally training yourself it's about not giving up it's it's essentially you yeah, know they give up never surrender exactly yeah by about halfway through the program you get into the point where the body is sorted the body can do it but it's 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 getting the willpower together to just keep pushing on and keep going uh, um, yeah, I mean, the astute amongst you may have been counting. I've been going, I'm on week five now, uh, and I've been doing this for about <laughs> about nine weeks. <laughs> I should have been there by now, but I, I keep keep knackering myself up. And I mean, I had to carry, I carried a load of bookcases up with some stairs one week, and that did my thighs in, so I couldn't run for that week. And then I knew hiking boots, and that did my heels in, so I couldn't run for that week. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of slacking behind, going to be a lot, lot longer at it than I thought. But I've gotten to the point now, and I just don't think I could have run 20 minutes continuously at the start of well it does work it is working i'm very impressed recommend it um yeah so from here on i think it's just longer and longer continuous runs up until week nine when it is literally half an hour of running at that point i could probably try park runs again and, and not embarrass myself uh, i think you underestimate your ability to embarrass yourself. <laughs> well i'll embarrass myself in many other ways yeah they'll probably just do us like a massive stewards inquiry and drugs test because of my sudden and un- unexpected import- performance increase since uh, the last time i did a park run i think the last one i finished 38 minutes I imagine if I'm, I'm sort of just trying to ballpark and project, I think I'll probably be looking at 25 minutes okay. <clears throat> if, <laughs> to, once I've got up to speed on the, the final week. And what was your reference time that you need to beat? Uh, I don't know, really. I thought I'd get in another half an hour would be, would be nice, but I don't know. I just hadn't really thought about the, the goal time. But being able to just run the entire way around a 5K course, that's that's the thing. By, it, by your time goal based. time, what I mean is how fast does the person you do them with do them? Oh, oh, I see. Yes, there's a certain competitive aspect. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know how, how fast she gets in. She just disappears at the start and leaves me to die. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I want to beat her. Yeah, yeah. that'd be the way. Yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah, just come in and beat her one day and just. Yeah. Talk. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll give it a go. Woof, gone. You know. Yeah. Ah, I don't know. It's no. It's not about competition. You're still in your first. You're 5K? only competing with yourself. You see, that's the thing. It's yeah. Uh, so yeah. So there we go. I just thought I had to tell someone because I'm quite pleased with that. There you go. Have you got anything else to say? No, I got nothing else for you. Yeah, do you spiel then? You could go along to HannahMillerTime.com where you can see all of our previous episodes and listen to all our previous shows and leave us comments. There's also a link there to the Steam group and the Slack mm. group. And yes. It's... Various other ways to get in touch with us. Go along to the uh, Slack group. Say hi. Come play games with us. Yes. Yeah, particularly Tabletop Simulator. Yeah. We're, we're, we're open to board games now. We will, in- Wide variety. We will introduce you to interesting board games. I noticed There's board... also Minecraft servers and things. Oh, there's the Minecraft server, yes. Uh, but after we mentioned on the last show, we got... Uh, a couple more people signing up yeah and there's a massive re- uh, Days has done another rebuild and now it's got airships I think he's put the airships mod in so, uh, so a golden age of zeppelins and, and monocles await us oh. yes excellent uh, yes. apparently they crash quite easily when they try and cross chunk boundaries but you know hey ho <laughs> Very limited airships. You can also go on to YouTube where you can see all the video episodes of the shows and uh, like and subscribe on there if you uh, feel like it and feel like um, increasing our egos. Mm. That's all it's about. Egos. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you can join us next week when we'll be back with more games. See you later. Goodbye.